Hello, and welcome to Strategames. I'm Jason, and today on Simple Strategy, we're talking about Istanbul, not to be confused with its former name, Constantinople. I want to be clear, Istanbul was Constantinople, now it's Istanbul, not Constantinople. Istanbul is all about getting the most value out of your actions. A simple example of this is the warehouses. It's best to visit a warehouse when you have zero of that resource, so that you are going from 0% to 100% when you fill up. If you already have even a single resource of that type, you're missing out on 50% or 33% of the value you could get, and so on. Similarly, you want to make sure you have space for all the resources when you visit the post office or black market, otherwise these actions have less value. When visiting the small or large markets, you want to make sure you have as many resources to sell as possible, since the payout ratio is better each additional resource you sell. That's not to say it's never worth it to go here if you can only sell three or four resources, but if you can make just one or two additional stops to fill up on resources before selling, it might be worth it for the extra lira you'll receive. At the tea house, you can name any number between 3 and 12, and you gain that many lira if the number you roll is equal to or greater than that number. If not, you gain just two coins. Here is the probability of succeeding a roll for each number you name. Of course, the chances of rolling successfully decrease as the number increases. This is helpful information, but how do we know what number is best to name? By multiplying the number of coins you'll receive on a successful roll by the probability of success, and adding that to the number of coins you'll receive on a failed roll multiplied by the probability of failure, we find the expected number of coins on each number. Using this, we can see that guessing 7 gives you the highest expected coins per roll, making it the best choice if all you're concerned with is getting the most coins. If you desperately need 12 lira, you can certainly guess 12, though maybe don't. The numbers here change a lot once you have the dice manipulation mask tile. Since you can choose to turn either die rolled into a 4, or you can just re-roll the dice entirely, your chances of success go up drastically. Here's all the math laid out. If you're interested in it, there's a link to the spreadsheet in the description, but the important part is that the highest expected coins per roll changes to an 8 after you have the mosque tile, so that's the number you should be guessing the most. When you visit the fountain, don't always recall all of your assistants. I like to leave at least one on the board somewhere I plan to go in the next few turns, so that I can perform an action by picking up an assistant rather than dropping one off. This allows me to increase the longevity of my travels before I have to revisit the fountain again. One of the most crucial ways to get the most out of your actions is by landing on the fountain as infrequently as possible. If every fifth turn you're visiting the fountain, then you likely need to plan out your turns a little bit better. Identify which tiles can be beneficial to visit multiple times within a few turns, first when you leave an assistant there, and then when you pick them back up. Resource accumulation tiles, like warehouses, black market, and post office, can be beneficial to visit twice within a few turns if you spend those resources in between visits. And similarly, tiles where you can spend resources, or lira, like the small and large markets, Sultan's Palace, and Gemstone Dealer, can be good to visit twice if you restock your resources and money in between visits. This can create a circuit for you to travel between tiles where you receive resources and tiles where you spend them. It's never bad to land on the tea house or caravansary multiple times, as you have no limit to cards or lira, though they can be lower impact tiles, so I wouldn't just default to landing on them over and over. They're best used as stepping stones to get to a faraway tile you want to reach, then allowing you to double back to pick up an assistant. As for the mosques, you can only use these actions twice per game, so it's good to purchase both tiles from each mosque close together, so that you can drop off an assistant and pick them up just a few turns later, so that you aren't leaving an assistant where you won't be able to use them for a large portion of the game. The Wainwright, like the mosques, has a limited number of uses, since you can only buy three wheelbarrow extensions. Extensions. When you pick these up can vary based on your strategy, but I generally like to pick up at least one or two close to the beginning so that I can get greater value out of the warehouses whenever I visit them. The police station is another action that you likely won't use more than just a couple times each game. Once you've used it, you can't get any value from landing there again until your family member has been sent back to jail by another player. So in addition to relying on your opponents to use this tile often, you also have to give them the bonus of three lira or one card every time they capture your family member, which disincentivizes you from constantly dispatching your family. And that's all we have this week for Istanbul. You've just leveled up. Thanks for watching Simple Strategy. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe. Next week, we'll be looking at Carcassonne.